So uh, thank you everyone for coming out. And uh, we wanted to invite you to take a look at what we have uh, developed around bringing our Imaginate Clarity product to the cloud. So I'm gonna take you through it and talk about what it is and uh, you know where it's at in terms of its, uh, its development and then uh, open it up for questions. We'll take a look at a demonstration of it, the whole, uh, the whole usual thing. So moving forward, advance my slides, there we go. So uh, just to talk about Imaginate Clarity, by itself for a moment. Uh, the existing Imagine Clarity product has been around since 2011, and it's really come to specialize in the automation of manual and repetitive tasks for people who use projects, uh, mostly in Revit, but, uh, but now supporting some AutoCAD uh, tasks as well. And we really pride ourselves on the idea that we're saving you time. If we can uh, take that 20 minute PDF printing task off of your plate and have it run in the middle of the night or run in the background. Uh, we feel like we've saved you that, that 20 minutes, giving you back that 20 minutes. And over time, and since about 2015, when we started keeping track of such things, we have saved all of our customers over 1.3 million hours of time. Uh, so hope that uh, you know if you're an existing clarity customer you're happy with your clarity usage for that uh, for that reason uh, but as we um, looked at sort of moving clarity forward into the future uh, we're well aware that clarity is an on-premise product that's always the first thing I have to tell people when I tell people about clarity today is that it's on-premise and it's not a cloud product and more and more that's not people's uh, expectations. Um, to get Clarity on-premise, you have to have a server that you supply to, for the web application and the database. You have to have one or more task processing workstations to do the actual work and both the hardware and the Autodesk licenses uh, to uh, power them. And then, you know, you have to have your own IT staff to keep everything uh, running and updated and all of those kinds of things. And we recognize that that's you know that's a burden and an obstacle so we figured that clarity in the cloud could uh, could start down the path of helping with that and lower the barriers to entry for using clarity uh, without needing all of that uh, upfront hardware and software commitment so that's the beginning of something new here which is imagine it clarity cloud and what is it? It's it's ultimately Clarity as a software as a service model. Uh, there is no hardware or software to install if you're talking about BIM 360 projects, which most of you uh, are focused on BIM 360 projects these days. Uh, we do expect that you know there might be a little bit of hardware or a little bit of software to install in the in the future if you want to work with file based projects. But for now, we're focused mostly on BIM 360. And all of the task work being performed is all performed in the cloud, either by Imagine It or via Autodesk Forge. So we'll take a look at, uh, at what that looks like and what that means. And so when we started to talk to people about this, one of the questions that seems like it comes up is, is this just hosting? Is Imagine It putting the task servers in the cloud for us, and we're just connecting to Imagine It task servers to do the work. And that's really not what we're doing, we're, and it's not the case for two different reasons. Uh, one, this is a fully re-architected Clarity designed for the cloud and designed as a, as a multi-firm, multi-tenant uh, kind of system. Um, so we'll take a look at it in a moment, but ultimately like BIM 360, everybody gets their own tenant all their data is stored separately we don't actually really store much actual data ourselves uh, because we're just hooking up uh, bim 360 and just sort of passing uh, data around so so ultimately this is not just us hosting existing clarity this is you know sort of the uh, what we hope to be the next generation infrastructure for uh, clarity over the long term um, so I do have to spend a lot of slides actually talking about the limitations of uh, Imagine Clarity Cloud uh, over, uh, you know, especially in comparison to our Imagine It um, 
clarity product that's on premise so this uh, little slide uh, portion is what we talk about doing in the on-premise product we've got automation we've got model health uh, we've got room and equipment data sheets and data uh, we've got some tools specifically for business intelligence uh, all of that kind of stuff and that's been developed over a 10-year time span and so we couldn't really wait to build all of clarity back up in into the cloud um, so we figured we would start with task automation so uh, that's our short-term focus and we expect to expand that uh, with lots of releases you know uh, during this year and and going forward uh, to add the other pieces but our, our short-term focus is task automation because that's where people get usually the most return on investment for um, you know things like model health or data sheets or business intelligence it's hard to put numbers on what the value of those things are but you know saving you uh, 20 minutes a day or uh, uh, or 284 hours per year that's something that's easy to put a value on so that's our focus on clarity in the cloud um, the initial support is for bim 360 projects only so the projects are already in the cloud we're going to be running them in the cloud uh, they really don't have to uh, you know get moved very far to be processed uh, in bim 360 and with autodesk forge um, the initial support uh, is for working on BIM 360 published models only, not live models. And that's that's a, a restriction that comes from Autodesk. Uh, we think that Autodesk will resolve that uh, issue by uh, later this year. Uh, but uh, for the moment, that's a restriction that we're, uh, we're living within, uh, is that you have to work on published models. However, we do have a lightweight publish model task that you can run to make sure that your models are actually published and up to date so that you can run tasks on them. And then the actual tasks that we're supporting um, is a much smaller list than in the on-premise version. I, I think we might be up to 70 tasks in the on-premise version. Uh, we don't have quite that many in um, in Clarity Cloud 1.0, uh, partially because we have to re-implement them a little bit, and partially because of you know some restrictions about how things run in the cloud. Do we have access to uh, to different um, you know uh, add-ins like Navisworks or uh, Model Checker or those kinds of things? So you know there's a variety of things that are holding us back a little bit. Um, some of those we think we can work through in the short term, but we would expect this to grow over time. To get closer to what we have on the uh, on the Clarity Cloud on-premise side of things, but uh, this is where we we started with in Clarity Cloud 1.0 as of today. So let's move into demonstration. Man, it only took me eight minutes to get through that and get uh, right into uh, looking at a demonstration of the product. So I, I'm gonna live demo because I'm a glutton for punishment and I obviously have not learned my lesson about live demonstrations. But let's uh, roll the dice and see how I do. So um, Clarity again, you know, clarity.imagineit.com. Anyone can come in there, anyone signs in. Um, you know, much like BIM 360, you've got the ability to, you know, if you're if you're assigned to more than one company's projects, um, you uh, you know can go over and see those projects uh, if they're set up inside of your Clarity environment. Um, let's see, as well as uh, as well as having access to different uh, different hubs. Uh, those those are really more like uh, hubs than uh, uh, BIM 360 accounts rather than uh, projects. So. Uh, the projects look just like uh, they do inside of uh, of regular clarity uh, but if we drill in uh, to here you can see that it's a uh, it's a little bit more you know cleaner user interface partially because we don't have as much stuff in place uh, but the concept is you know keep it uh, keep it clean and neat we have a project home page we have links that take you directly to where the bim 360 files are stored for the project we have the ability to browse the bim 360 um, location um, you know and and files and 
subfolders directly inside of Clarity. And then ultimately we have our tasks. Um, and you know the tasks are very much like what uh, we have on-premise. Uh, if I open up, for example, the uh, PDF task, we've got the same kind of uh, kind of concepts. Um, you know, as opposed to our uh, current version, where everything is sort of a cached copy of uh, what the models are. All of these tasks are live. So when we hit the target button, it takes a moment later, longer than normal, but the uh, uh, the data is completely live uh, in terms of how it works for targeting and that kind of thing. Um, we do have uh, the ability to, um, uh, you know, to pick from the existing, uh, you know, sheet sets and other things that we have for convenience. Um, and those appear, actually, we don't have a database export kind of task at the moment, uh, but anytime that you run any task uh, at all, uh, we are updating uh, some of the sort of convenience data for um, for configuration. So, you know, the list of sheet sets, the list of, uh, you know, work sets, uh, parameters, uh, those kinds of things. So, um, so yeah, so ultimately, you know, you'll find this to be similar to, um, you know, to our on-premise product, uh, but just uh, configuring the data and running it against uh, data in the cloud. Uh, I'm going to go in and I'm going to run the uh, schedule export. So taking uh, schedules inside of Revit and um, and exporting them out to Excel. Uh, and again, here, um, you know, it, it had to live scan through and find the uh, matching Revit files. So it started three tasks uh, from from me hitting the run button there. Um, just as um, you know, as with uh, um, the on-premise, we can also schedule uh, for particular times, only on change, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but then let's go look at the current tasks. So these tasks are now uh, queued up and being, you know, and being sent off to um, sent off to uh, Autodesk uh, for processing inside of Forge. And uh, you know, one of the minor things that we're really excited about is just that. Uh, that the whole communication of status and that kind of thing is, um, you know, is all uh, happening live here. Uh, you can see I'm not refreshing. Uh, it's just uh, it's just something that happens, um, you know, live on the page, uh, and that extends to uh, actual status messages coming through from the various tasks. So these are currently queued up to be processed uh, at Forge, and then hopefully. Uh, for the purposes of the demo, I hope that they actually uh, go to in progress, uh, you know, quite uh, quite quickly. But uh, Autodesk does not always uh, uh, bend to my uh, to, to my wishes on that uh, from a demo perspective. So uh, so we might uh, uh, flip away and come back. We could do that. Um, uh, let's see. But um, but yeah, ultimately, oh, there we go. Yeah, see, so now we got some live stuff going through there. So so ultimately this this is running on Autodesk Forge um, design automation uh, processing in the cloud and being you know and the files get delivered back and and Clarity handles the delivery to uh, to wherever you want them to go. So yeah, so we're you know excited about this new uh, kind of uh, infrastructure and being able to uh, you know to see live what's uh, what's happening without uh, the sort of constant refreshing and that kind of thing. Um, so uh, beyond this, um, you know, the same kinds of things that are possible in other um, in other Clarity environments are possible. Uh, sort of looking globally across your tasks, uh, setting up the um, the multiple BIM 360 uh, integrations uh, for the different projects, uh, you know, managing your list of users, uh, those kinds of things, as well as managing your uh, individual profile, as well as uh, uh, settings for, um, uh, you know, for your offices and the basic, you know, basic info about each company. So that's that's really the nickel tour of um, of Clarity Cloud. Um, you know, we expect it to, to grow and get, you know, more powerful uh, over time with more tasks uh, and all those kinds of things. I think I showed, I didn't really show the, uh, 
you know, adding a task, you know, kind of concept, but the same, same kinds of things uh, apply there. Um, BIM 360 publish, BIM 360 copy is a little bit like our, um, our upload to model coordination today, um, especially if you're uh, sort of doing the, the federated model where you want to publish and then copy that published model into, uh, into a target BIM 360 folder uh, with all the links intact for, uh, for model coordination. But uh, but yeah, so that's uh, that's ultimately uh, where things. Okay, yeah, we're still uh, still grinding away on things, but um, but yeah, ultimately um, these things are all getting uh, finished off and uh, delivered. And if I go look in uh, the folder where I have configured to deliver these things. You can see that uh, we've updated. Well, at least one of them has come in. I think they uh, they're all coming in slowly. But um, but yeah, ultimately, you know, everything gets delivered, uh, or if you'd like it to be delivered. So um, that's the uh, that's the nickel tour. Uh, flipping back to my PowerPoint for a moment. Um, uh, you know, some other notable limitations. Um, you know, we do have uh, thanks to Revit being able to do PDF export itself uh, in uh, Revit 2022. We do have the ability to do PDFs in that environment. Um, we don't have the possibility of doing PDFs in, in previous versions because there is no ability to have a printer driver up in the Forge environment. So, uh, so until 2022 of Revit, um, you know, you can't really, uh, you can't really do it that way other than, you know, there's hoops that you could jump through, like make DWGs and then uh, make uh, AutoCAD in the cloud, make your PDFs out of that. That's actually how, how uh, Autodesk themselves was doing, were doing it in the past. Um, you know, the other thing is uh, we talked with Autodesk the other day, they're still in the process of, um, you know, of upgrading uh, their uh, forge processing machines. So today, you know, projects that are over uh, one gigabyte, which I realize is a uh, not insubstantial percentage for some of you, um, are really not a good fit for for running in the uh, forge processing machines. But you know, we believe that they'll uh, get those uh, upgraded in the um, you know coming you know weeks and months, um, so that uh, so that those will be able to uh, run uh, nicely as well. So with all these you know, limitations and, and showing you what it looks like, um, who do we feel like this is for? Well, uh, you know, I think historically Clarity has been, um, you know, has been a great fit for companies with at least, uh, you know, 25 seats uh, of Revit. And the more seats of Revit that you have, the more pain you have around doing all that, that manual work. Um, but, um, you know, but ultimately, you know, we think that, uh, you know, some firms, you know, they're in the sort of small to medium category kind of, you know, said, well, you know, they weren't necessarily ready to, to spend on all the hardware and software that were necessary to get uh, Clarity, you know, set up and, and maintained and that kind of thing. So we think that, that uh, this option for Clarity Cloud, you know, might be a good fit for them. Um, you know, the other thing, I think if you don't have Clarity, and I'm actually, Betting that a high percentage of you do have clarity, but uh, um, but if you don't have clarity and you know you just wanted to dip your toe in the water for one project or two projects, uh, this now makes that possible because you don't have to invest in you know the hardware and the setup and the implementation and uh, all that kind of thing. You can just uh, you know do the experiment, uh, prove it out with uh, you know, with one or two projects, um, and then finally. Um, in the future, you know, we think more and more firms, as I talk to uh, IT people uh, at each firm, you know, they'd, they'd really like to get out of the, uh, you know, managing of server businesses, um, you know, in some cases. And so, uh, you know, it may be appropriate for, uh, you know, for any firm that just has that as a uh, cultural thing where they'd like to uh, get out of the business of managing servers. So, you know, if it's not uh, sort of upfront software, you know, how do you how do you buy it? How do you buy Clarity uh, in the cloud? Um, so this is something that you know may change. We're still experimenting with the pricing, um, but 
right now the way that it would work is uh, that you pay a fixed fee per month uh, for every project that you have active uh, and that that covers your you know sort of uh, basic usage of clarity as well as support and everything else um, and then there's an, an additional usage fee based on the number of task hours spent um, so if you know if you run a a PDF task that takes 30 minutes, um, you know, you would, um, you would have, uh, um, you know, uh, in that case, uh, four hours, you know, $4 worth of task charge, um, you know, that would uh, go for that. Um, you know, there's no limit on number of users. Um, and right now we're working on basically either something where you're billed after the fact, uh, or, you know, we should momentarily have uh, prepay credits uh, or some, you know, some customized enterprise pricing. So that's, that's the rough, um, you know, uh, view of, of how we're charging for Clarity. Uh, some of that is, you know, is driven by Autodesk. Uh, and that's how Autodesk charges us uh, for portions of that. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's a little bit on the why. But, um, you know, we, we have done a little bit of comparisons to uh, to people who are uh, you know, running on-premise Clarity today. And a lot of, you know, our smaller firms, uh, you know, would, would easily save money on that plan if we look at their usage, uh, you know, and compared to the total cost of ownership of hardware or software, um, you know, and IT management, um, you know, this, this would definitely, you know, save money in, you know, in comparison. So, you know, we hope that uh, people will give it a look. But, uh, you know, for right now, for a limited time, um, you know, it's, uh, it's free. And we'd like to encourage people who are interested in it to, uh, you know, to give it a try. Um, and for a limited time, if you sign up, we'll just give you eight, you know, eight hours of uh, process time, like, a, you know, a free day's worth of work uh, from our uh, robotic intern to, uh, you know, to try it out uh, when you sign up. And, you know, no further obligation, but uh, you know, we hope that uh, that you will, if you're interested in the concept of how it works and what it can and can't do, and you know, how does it operate, um, we hope that you, you know, that you uh, sign up and uh, and try it out. But how do you do that? Um, well, if you go to imagineit.com/clarity-cloud, um, you will find a uh, get started button uh, on it. And that's a form to fill out. And after you fill out the form, uh, we'll go in and, and set you up on the back end. Um, and, uh, you know, and then you should be able to uh, sign in. You should be able to invite other people. You should be able to set up projects, all of those different, uh, different kinds of things. And I think, you know, people who are uh, um, comfortable with Imagine It uh, Clarity on premise should be very comfortable uh, trying it out in the cloud if you want. Assistance, uh, you know, reach out to us. We are happy to uh, spend time with you to get up and running, and uh, you know, and understand what we have here in Imagine it Cloud, both uh, you know, both what it is as well as where it's going. So, with that, I have raced through in record time, uh, but uh, we are now uh, open for uh, questions and answers. So, uh, I encourage if you've got questions to. Uh, put them into the question panel uh, that's in the, um, the go to meeting and we can uh, we can see what kind of uh, questions that you have and do our best to answer them. And Matt, I can kind of go through some of those questions with and for you. Okay, yeah, yeah, cool. right off. Um, first question, uh, when we're talking about running tasks based off of published models, we're yes. just talking about those that are being used through the design module, BIM 360 Design, ABC Pro. But their question came in that says, can you use Clarity Cloud with Revit models that are just cloud-based models that are uploaded to Docs? Yes. So the answer is yes on that. Uh, yes, I, I tend to refer to things as published models, but you're right. Uh, so drag and drop sort of uh, RVT files that are just up there, we can absolutely run those. Okay. And you, you kind of touched on this. But there's a similar question to something you alluded to early on in your presentation of can we run a hybrid of cloud and on-premise? You know, that's that's something that we're looking at for the future. And, um, you know, I won't be surprised if we have that in the, uh, you know, in the 
not too distant future, but um, yeah, it's not here today. Cool. So. And I think this next question probably came in slightly before you got to it in the presentation, but in case there's anything you want to reiterate on it, um, Clary Cloud does not have a on-premise task server. So the question was, where is the Revit that would run a scheduled task or PDF? And that goes back to the, the whole Forge and hours of processing time. Correct, yes. So uh, Autodesk Forge, which is Autodesk's uh, sort of um, next generation um, you know, API in the cloud concept, um, you know, they have uh, effectively, you know, a uh, an unlimited amount of um, of headless Revit task servers that are out there, and we have uh, programmed them to make our ta our tasks available. Um, and so we are sending those tasks over to Autodesk, uh, you know, to effectively open the model up in a special headless Revit and execute the task and give us back the results. So that's all part of uh, Forge, but you know, you don't have to know anything about Forge. That's, uh, that's just how it, uh, how it works in the background. Uh, we just, um, you know, we're just making it available to you as a, uh, as a service. Cool. Uh, the question came through, this will be from a, an existing user, but UNC pathing, is it still going to be a requirement? That's kind of a nuanced question because we don't currently have the ability for Clarity Cloud to reach into your file server environment. It's truly all just cloud-based, but... Correct, yes. So uh, so right now, it's we are only supporting BIM 360 um, projects um, and BIM 360 delivery of where the uh, of where the files go. Um, you know, that said, I mean, we are going to look at, you know, how do we make a hybrid model work? Um, and, uh, you know, I will, I will tell you that, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those great things when you get a chance to re-architect your product from scratch, because all the decisions that you made that you were stuck with, uh, you know, for years upon years, you can, uh, you can more easily revisit and, you know, get them, uh, really right the second time. So hopefully, uh, when, and if we get the, uh, you know, the uh, hybrid model in place, we will, uh, you know, we will be friendlier than uh, than requiring UNC paths for everything. But that's futures and I, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, I didn't put up the safe harbor statement at the beginning, but, you know, don't buy based on, uh, you know, don't buy anything based on uh, where it's going so much as uh, where it is right now. Cool. And this might go into more of a, future functionality request, but uh, there was a question here saying, when you select a target for a task, is there a way to see the published version of the file being selected? Um, okay, see, I don't so know what they mean by see how, see, uh, see the version number, see the, um, see the, yeah. like visualize the file. I'm not sure yeah, my head went to like the current visualization of that file, which for Revit gets all sorts of crazy and complicated because when you're talking about a 3D view, level one floor plan, site plan, there's all sorts of things yeah. that are bundled yeah. into it. But the idea of having some of that extra whatever information, more data about knowing what you're picking, good thing, but yeah, yeah, but no, needs I, more information I, on that for a feature. I think that's a fascinating idea, especially um, well, the, the version information or, or that kind of thing would be. Uh, would be yeah. easy or, or the date, um, but, um, but yeah, and, and getting into visualization, that'd be really interesting. For sure. So. Uh, then a couple questions here related to uh, an existing user from here. Uh, there was a question about cost, which you covered at the end of the presentation, so we're good there. Um, but they're talking about, is there a way for cross-grading from the on-premise to the cloud version or migrating users from on-premise to cloud version and single sign-on? Um, so uh, let's see, let me take those things in order. Uh, we don't have anything yeah. yet, although I do expect that we will, uh, you know, offer something. Um, and, uh, you know, I think if somebody wanted it, wanted to, you know, convert today, uh, we'd, uh, find a way to uh, to migrate their data for them um, but um, but yeah so let's see and then other questions about, um, about migrating SSL. users and SSO yeah so migrating users I mean if you really have you know a lot of uh, users uh, we could um, 
you know, we could look at uh, at migrating them, uh, but we do not have an SSO uh, integration as of yet. We do know that that's going to be uh, get, that's going to be necessary. So um, so we are planning on that, um, both sort of like what you have inside of Clarity today, where you can configure your own uh, SSO as the um, yeah you know, as the owner of of you know a particular domain, but then also um, you know we anticipate also uh, leveraging Autodesk uh, for SSO, so just however your Autodesk login works, uh, we may uh, leverage that also. Okay. Um, there was a question about connecting to a BIM360 hub administered by a different company. Yep. Um, yeah, so that, that works uh, much like it does inside of Clarity today. Um, so there is, um, similar to how you've had to go in and um, it, both for yourself, you know, your own BIM360 account and uh, sort of give permission for Imagine it Clarity to be used on it. Um, you know, you also have to have the, um, have the BIM360 account owner of the other hub go in and say, yes, it's okay for BIM 360, for Imagine Clarity to be used on this account. Um, or, now, this is a different application, uh, Imagine Clarity Cloud, uh, as compared to um, Imagine Clarity. Um, and so uh, it is something where you would have to go in again and have them, uh, have them give you permission, um, you know, to, uh, to be able to, uh, you know, to use uh, Clarity Cloud at all. Uh, but then once they've given permission, it works much like the existing, uh, you know, the existing system where you can go in and you can see any of the, um, any of the uh, hubs that you've been given access to that uh, have access to, um, you know, to other, um, um, you know, other projects. So I was going to go in and um, look at a test project. Um, so yeah, so you have access, you know, you, you pick the hub. Oh, in this case, we only have one, one available, but, um, but yeah, ultimately it's just a matter of, um, of getting, you know, the other hub owner to say, it's okay to use Clarity on our hub, and then we will continue to use your credentials that you specify to control what access you have uh, and what you're able to do within that hub. You know, there's never anything that that you can do as part of Clarity that you can't do by hand, you know, yourself. So, cool. In the file limitations that you mentioned, because of memory and processing power. Yep. Uh, you mentioned less than one gig. Is that in reference to the size noted in the BIM 360 site or a detached model size? Um, I would say that that is. I'd go with the larger of the two to be safe. Well, yeah, the larger of the two to be safe, but it does feel like since we're talking about published models, mm -hmm. it also kind of feels like you know, it would be the detached because it's not going to have any of the, um, you know, the, the ownership issues that, um, you know, when you're opening a live model, it, uh, you know, you've got all kinds of uh, ownership data about who owns every element and every work set. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it would be less than a live model. Uh, but, uh, but I think similar to, you know, if you, if you did download, uh, you know, you can right click in, uh, or click on the model in BIM 360 and say, you know, download source file, um, you know, whatever you got there and whatever you tried to open, that's, you know, that's what it would, uh, would take. So, but yeah, I, we realize that's a, uh, we realize that that's a, that's a tough limitation for those of you who, uh, you know, have, uh, you know, significant uh, projects. So. There was a question of, um, kind of reiterating back to some of the earlier parts of the conversation, but will this replace the on-site version? I don't see it replacing the on-site version in the foreseeable future, uh, which I would say, you know, might be five years out from now. Um, you know, let's say, um, you know, might it it's at some point, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, I, I think that there's just, it's a, it's a different, you know, it's a little bit different business model. Um, I think people kind of like, you know, who like the on-premise, you know, like it for a reason. And, 
you know, we uh, even more so than Autodesk are uh, apparently sensitive to uh, what you guys actually like or don't like. So, um, so yeah, so I, I don't anticipate the, uh, um, you know, the, uh, the on-premise version going away. I think there's also, you know, things, you know, for the next five years, there'll be things that uh, we will struggle to make available in the cloud version. Um, you know, just in the same way that we had the restriction about, uh, about you know, PDFs and not being able to uh, have printer drivers, you know, in the cloud and, and that kind of thing. Um, so, so I think that, uh, you know, in, until all of the restrictions can be removed, I don't think we'd even, you know, reasonably contemplate that. For sure. A um, couple questions, I'm going to combine a few here related to trying things out, dip your toe that you had mentioned. Yep. Um, really, it's the first part is just go to the form, click the button, yay, let's go. But there's no restriction in the number of models that is in whatever sample project that you're running on. The, the restriction we have right now is just the, the amount of processing time that comes with the dip your toe and try it for free, correct? Yep. Correct. Cool. Um, right. So if it, yeah, if it is, you know, you, you could run, uh, you know, uh, a thousand, you know, tiny tasks or, uh, you know, one, uh, one mega task. So, and right. I, I don't know if I, if I mentioned it, I feel like I had a slide on it, but, uh, but, uh, you know, the PDFs being created, um, I think I started to mention it, but then I didn't talk about this, the PDFs being created, um, you know, on the um, on those forge task processing machines, I mentioned that they're being upgraded, and you know, today they do not have GPUs. Um, so similar to, um, I think a number of our customers have tried running task servers on just virtual machines without GPUs, and they've generally found that you know the the performance of you know creating PDFs is a little disappointing uh, compared to you know your typical production workstation that's got a you know, a nice GPU on it. Um, so, um, so yeah, so that that is a, you know, a, a limitation out there is that uh, some things like PDFs could be, uh, you know, could be slower uh, in this environment until Autodesk uh, upgrades those things. Okay. Um, one comment here that I'll preface it and make sure you agree with me, no, but there was somebody coming in saying, well, what is that ROI comparison to the on-premise version? My, my statement would be let's maybe have a, a more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation so that we can yeah. compare it to your specific use yep. and, and get a little bit more personalized for for that yeah i mean ultimately we you know we know what uh we know what hardware costs we know uh you know and you know we can know by looking at your data um if you share it with us you know how many uh, hours a month you're spending how many projects are actually active and running tasks, uh, those kinds of things. So, you know, those are really the those are really the metrics, and I, I'm sure we would be happy to sit down with you and uh, do a comparison to see if it, uh, you know, if it makes sense for you. Okay. Um, confirmation then: What versions of Revit does this work with? Ah, 20. Thank you. Uh, that's not on the slide. Uh, 2018 through 2022. Um, and while we're going to this next question, could you go back in the slide deck to the page that said, here's where you go to click the button to give it a try? Yep, um, right here. Cool, so leaving that just up for a minute while we chat. Um, it sounds like just a little bit of confirmation or clarity provided to the question. Uh, currently we have, we have to do this option of assigning a task server to an Autodesk Cloud Design license. I'm assuming that this person's talking about uh, on-premise clarity where we have an option, it's kind of beta-ish, but an option to say use the Autodesk Cloud for, yes. for processing things. But he's saying, how does this work with Clarity Cloud? And really, you don't have to worry about it. Right, yeah, so so our on-premise option where we do have the, the option to process tasks in the cloud, um, you know, ultimately Autodesk you know, charges you by the hour uh, for usage of the uh, of the Autodesk Cloud, and so our on-premise system. If you want to try out the cloud that way, um, you basically have to go out and get yourself a Forge developer ID. Um, and once you 
you know, have that uh, sort of uh, ID and, and, and key, um, you can plug that in and our on-premise system will, you know, will send over, uh, you know, tasks to be executed on the cloud. So, so we do have that mechanism, but, you know, you, you know, you have to sign up with Autodesk and you have to, you know, pay with cloud credits, um, you know, when they're, uh, when the work gets done. So, uh, so that is out there. Uh, whereas Imagine Clarity Cloud uh, is not like that. Uh, Imagine Clarity Cloud sort of, you know, uh, hides all of that from you and you just basically sign up for, you know, for Clarity Cloud and start, uh, start using it. And, right. uh, and, and similarly, uh, you do not need to, so the other aspect of, the, the, of this question, the way it was asked, you do not need to have a, a licensed copy of Revit. You do not need right. to have a dedicated BIM Collaborate Pro license assigned to a task server for all this because you're using Forge to do it all, correct? Right. Yep. You don't, you don't have any task servers of any, any kind, you know, in uh, the current Clarity Cloud model. You know, all that work is being done in the cloud. You don't need to devote any hardware resources. You, you can, you know, as of today, you can manage it all uh, via, you know, via a browser and never have any on-premise uh, stuff. Yeah. Um, somebody that types in, say, and this probably can go to any number of different other, like a third-party file storage providers. This person in particular mentions Ignite, yep. and they might want to pull out information from a task and either read to Ignite or pull from, and the same thing could be for Box, Dropbox, yep. SharePoint, you name it. Um, yeah, and, and so just to be clear, um, uh, you know, we do not support anything in Clarity Cloud as of 1.0 today other than BIM 360 for delivery or for, you know, where the project lives. Um, however, um, I will say on premise, um, you know, and this is one of these uh, safe harbor things. Like, you know, <laughs> don't uh, don't sue me if it doesn't show up there in the fall. But uh, right now, uh, we tentatively have Ignite scheduled for on premise integration in the fall, and I would expect that uh, anything that's you know in our on premise thing, uh, we will also get into Imagine at Clarity Cloud, you know, at some you know, similar kind of time frame. So, so eventually, yes, uh, but uh, we're not there today. Yeah, uh, we got a point of clarification when we were talking about seeing data about the published file when you're picking it for a task. Um, the person was specifically wanting to see the date that the published file well was gotcha. published. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's a good that's good feedback and. Uh, you know, we have it. Uh, you know, we have it on the files page, but we can look at whether we can, uh, you know, can also make it visible in the, um, you know, in the task target as well. Okay, uh, we've got some requests on future development and prioritization. Um, some other questions, kind of coming back again, asking if you know this cloud version is bundled with the clarity on premise that they already have and the answer is no but again go to the link that you see on your page right now and i'm pointing at it on my laptop which you can't see me so i don't know why i'm still talking with my hands but uh, if you want to give it a try if you want to make a comparison to how does this work versus your on-premise version click there fill out the form give it a try see what it does for you and, and let's check out that reality and, and make the comparisons for for some places maybe wonderful in other places maybe you want to stick with on-prem for a while See how that goes. Um, question of how are fees charged for failed tasks? So, um, so it's a it's a good question, um, and uh, we're still working out the um, working out the details. But um, you know, today, if it's a failed task because of configuration, you know, like you say you know, print out this sheet set and that sheet set doesn't exist. Um, ultimately, that, you know, that's something where, um, you know, the, the, the stopwatch that decides how much you pay actually starts when the model starts loading. And, um, you know, so we, you know, so if, if we get the model open and then we realize that, uh, you know, that there is no matching sheet set for you and so we have to shut back down, 
um, that's something that we will get charged from Autodesk, uh, and so we kind of you know feel like we should be passing that charge through to you. Um, you know, on the other hand, if it's not a configuration thing, and if it's uh, you know if it's something where you know there's a bug in our software or something like that, uh, I think uh, you know it's our intention to not charge you for it, but we don't know if we uh, have all of the reporting in place to uh, make sure that that happens. But I, I think that's that's the direction that we would head. I can't guarantee where we are, uh, you know, right at this moment. Cool. And then one last question or request. And as I'm stating this, if anybody else has any questions, go ahead and keep on typing those into the Q and A panel. Uh, but the last one that I've got in the queue so far is more of a request. But is there a roadmap? Or what will be added when you've you've had some safe harbor statements and some things here and there, but we don't really have anything formally documented, yet, correct? Yeah, you know, I, I think we're not at the, we're not at that point, but I, I suspect that in the coming uh, months or two we'll uh, you know we'll firm up our uh, our roadmap, and and some of it honestly is is dependent upon Autodesk and Autodesk's timing for um, you know for removing some of the limitations on its end. Um, so. Uh, so yeah, as that becomes a little bit uh, clearer in the coming months, you know, that will uh, very much, you know, impact us. But um, but yeah, I mean, we're we're definitely you know going to be you know looking at um, you know people who try out the system. Um, you know, what do they think of it? What do they feel like is the most important thing? I think we want to be driven by our customers first and foremost. Um, but then also, um, you know, we know that we we want to add the uh, you know things like the uh, the model health check uh, kinds of uh, kinds of features, and so uh, you know that's one that you know I know that we're planning um, you know for the not so distant you know future, but um, but yeah I think we're going to be driven by a number of things. I think it'll be uh, you know a month or two before we can really talk uh, you know definitive roadmap instead of just uh, you know ideas that are uh, you know could shift depending on. You know who tries it and who uh, you know who has uh, audible feedback. Awesome. With that, I am not seeing any other questions remaining in our queue. Uh, if I've got that wrong and somebody's saying, "Wait, wait, wait," no, what about mine? Um, we'll pause a couple moments here to get those back in. But uh, there's a lot of great questions. I appreciate everybody with. Uh, with sending all those in there and, and Matt for your time and sitting here and answering them all. My pleasure. Uh, we're excited to have this and we hope uh, hope people will uh, try it out and tell us uh, tell us what you think. With that being said, oh, aha. One more. Here we go. One more. Um, gotcha. So there's, this is a person that has a, I believe has an existing on-premise version is wanting to test out the the cloud version. Um, I would say uh, let's get a separate conversation going through there. There the question is about how do we what do we get for support? Really, the support avenue that we'll want to go for cloud would be a little bit different from a support avenue that we take for your on-premise version. On-premise clarity, cloud clarity as well, but um, we'll have We've got unlimited support built into it if you keep the software current. Um, Clarity Cloud, because we're just starting this out now, we want to make sure you get the right direction and straight to the, the places where we can support you and, and help you out best. So we want to try and optimize that yeah. support workflow. So and I'll I, say for, for that, let's, let's talk a little bit deeper, for sure. And I, and I see that there is a question about, you know, should I go on-premise now? you know or should i go you know with clarity cloud and um you know you, you can definitely take a look and, and compare the two um i will say that uh you know the on-premise the on-premise tool is much more powerful today substantially um, yeah. substantially more powerful in terms of uh you know all of the things that you can do you know with clarity um you know 70 kinds of tasks you've got uh You've got Dynamo automation. You've got uh, you've got massive data 
um, you know, data integration and business intelligence possibilities. You've got, uh, um, you know, you've got PDFs in all Revit versions. <laughs> Um, you know, you've got integration with uh, uh, five different places to store your Revit models and uh, 10 different places that you can, different ways that you can deliver, you know, uh, task outputs to. So really, I mean, I, I, I don't want to, you know, I hope I've, you know, shared enough limitations along the way to, you know, to make people understand that, you know, this is really a 1.0 version product uh, in the cloud, but you know, we, we think that, you know, for people getting started, you know, there might be, uh, if all you really want is just, you know, just a few things, and we happen to have those few things now, then, you know, then great. Um, you know, and for other people who already have clarity on premise or, or comparing the two, um, you know, I, I think this shows you uh, one of the directions that we're, uh, you know, that we're moving in. 